Good morning, Tucson. Welcome to Mineral City TV. I'm your host, Raymond Hall. We're back today to show, introduce you to some more dealers here. <clears throat> We're in building B, room B13 with Crystal Cantina and Ed Ehrlich. It's a special room. You guys are really going to get a kick out of this one. It's different than any other room here. Come on, let's go in and have a talk with Ed. Hey, right, nice to meet you. Thanks hey, for being on the show. Doing? Great, great. Thanks, thanks. So, obviously, uh, we're going to talk about what's behind you in just a second, but sure. first tell us a little bit about yourself and your business here. Well, Crystal Cantina is a company dedicated to finding all types of minerals from all over the world. Basically, any kind of mineral that we have in our cases is good enough for our collection, and that's why we go ahead and do it. We focus on aesthetics, we focus on locale, and we focus on condition. We think that those are very important points, which I think a lot of advanced collectors would agree with. Absolutely. So that's kind of what we do. Um, we came up with our name because we thought it was just uh, something that we like and um, also basically wanted to create a crystal cantina, which is what you're now standing in, and we have the crystal bar behind us. <laughs> it's fantastic. So you're from California. California. We're out of uh, Beverly Hills, Beverly California. Hills. Awesome. Correct. All right. Well, let's have a little chat about you know everything we're seeing back here with sure. this bar. Sure. So this is a all original 1935 Brunswick bulk colander, back bar and front bar. Uh, the name is really called the Rex, but I've called it the Aztec, and I think it's just very, very fitting for the Tucson Gem Show. That's great. <laughs> so we brought this here, and we also uh, specialize in collectibles and, and antiques and vintage items, and so we just kind of took a few things out of storage to kind of help create and, and build out the atmosphere a little more. It's a great environment. <laughs> thank you. Whether it's the old original cocktail shakers from the 30s, scads of unopened packs of cigarettes from the 30s, gum, sodas, you name it. So, and that's what we do. Everything in this room except for the cases are original and old. Wow. And does this stay here year round or do you disassemble it and take it out of here each year? Well, this stays here year round. Okay. Uh, it is something that we installed ourselves. Uh, but I will say that if there was a good reason to move it and do something, uh, that would always be possible, but not something that we would <laughs> be looking forward to unless it was worth it. Quite a bit of work to get it in and out of here, I'm sure. Yeah. All right, well, everyone, I'm sure you got a great, great uh, look at the bar there. Let's take a look at some minerals because sure. there's beautiful minerals in here. We're not just here to talk about the bar. So we're going to start over here with this case. Okay. And, I mean, the first thing that catches my eye is that beautiful 98 Sapo. I'm a tourmaline lover. Always been a big fan of that pocket, and as most people are, it's like a holy grail for tourmaline collectors. It is. So it uh, is. I, I don't get the, these uh, blue cap bars very often. I mean, the sapos, sorry. And um, you know, it's just nice to be able to get one. It's got a very thick jemmy cap. Some people say, well, it's not a 98 because the shape or something like that. But what I know is it's got to be pretty darn close to that. It came from an old collection, okay. and I was just very lucky enough to get it here because uh, something that everybody always wants. So Absolutely. <laughs> hopefully I'll be able to hang on to it for a little while before it disappears. Yeah, it's a good one, sure. And they're Thank really you. nice and chunky, so much bigger than most you see. You know, they're it usually is. really tiny little crystals. There were big ones, but those are already in collections and right. no one sees those anymore. Yep. All you ever see are the little ones. Well, I also can't help but notice the beautiful Barra Scepter, well, etch crystal yes. you have there. So can we take that out and take a look at that one? Sure. And we're going to take this one over to the bar because that's where he likes to show off his crystals and what a great environment to do so. So can you tell us a little bit about that one? Sure. This is an incredible uh, Barra de Salinas uh, tourmaline. It's uh, fully etched. It's fully crystallized on the bottom like a floater. It's got incredible gemmy color. It's got absolutely no damage at all. When they made this fine, which was uh, the mid, uh, like 2015, 2014 or so, um, this was one of the two best to come out of the pocket. Okay, and yeah. I was lucky enough to be able to end up with it to uh, be able to move on to somebody else at some point. That's a beautiful large crystal. I'm going to take this and show it to them and maybe you yep. can go grab another specimen for us to uh, take a look at here. Sounds good. So we'll spin this around everyone so you can see these really deep etchings in here, almost going halfway into the center of the crystal. Nice luster all around and no damage, really great termination. All 
All right, so next we're going to take a look at another tourmaline. Oh, which one's the, oh, the amethyst. I forgot about the amethyst. All right, so we're going to put this one off to the side here for just a minute. This happens to be one of my favorite amethysts. Uh, I've nicknamed it the serpent head. And why I've nicknamed it the serpent head is, as you can see, it's somewhat shaped like a serpent. And it's got beautiful color, very amazing color. And if you look right in the center there, you'll see a fairly large bubble that I believe you'll see moving back and forth with it. Looks and it's like fully, fully it. etched, just an amazing shape from the Bramberg area, Gabobaseb Mountains, as they say, Orongo region, oh. Namibia. Everybody I know is a Namibia fan, and I, sure. I certainly am too. That is such an interesting shape. You can see there's almost a bend to it here, but it's really not. That was, you know, the original growth up right here, but it almost looks bent when you look at it from the side. Beautiful and complete all the way around in here. And hopefully you guys can see that wisp of purple when I put my hand behind it there like that, right in the center of that large termination. Beautiful crystal. All right, we're Thank going you, back to tourmaline and another one of everyone's famous favorite finds, the, the beautiful Jonas find from what was it, 78 or what was it? Arubilite, uh, this is uh, from the Jonas mine. Uh, this is an incredibly large piece for something that kind of floats around. It's over 300 grams. And yes, the Jonas mine is arguably one of the most famous finds of all time. Uh, 1978 on Good Friday is when they struck gold, as they say, sure. or struck tourmaline and really startled um, everybody. You the know, whole mineral community. Whole it was, mineral it was community. such a great find. Yeah, and if I can just show you sure. what some of the things that are characteristic about a Jonas mine piece are the light dusting of small little micro tourmalines and very gemmy caps on it. So a lot of times some rubellite can get uh, uh, mixed up from other kinds of locales. However, when you start to look at the color, uh, which kind of radiates and pops along with some of these other crystals sure. that are very small and give you the sparkly appeal, that's kind of how you end up knowing. That's a real Jonas, Jonas. yeah, Correct. for sure. Wow, all right, let's give just a little bit of a closer up look at here, and we're gonna pull out one more really special piece for you guys to take a look at. But these are all complete, fully terminated, even the backside, all complete through here. This actually might be the largest Jonas I think I've ever held. Oh, cool. <laughs> Excuse me, sorry about that. As a tourmaline lover, I'm in heaven right now, everyone. All right, we're going to put this one off to the side and look at one more really, really outstanding piece. Oh, man, this it's... is so heavy. I'm <laughs> telling you, this is, when you hold this for so long, it's an incredible piece of kunzite. It's bicolor, if you can kind of see the bicolor. Bicolor meaning that it's got, of course, two types of colors. One will be yellow, almost like a triphane almost like spode, you mean, mm -hmm. which is what it, it really is. And the kunzite is very pink. This is a very gemmy piece. And if you can notice the termination. That light etching on the, the surface. The light etching on the surface of it, okay. As well as the very, very glossy, very lustrous face uh, of the crystal, as well as the bottom, which is also absolutely fully terminated. So it's a floater. Or is is this chunk right in here? Well, that's, 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 that is totally crystallized as well. Awesome. If you take a look at it. What's the weight on this guy? Do you uh, remember? <laughs> the weight of this, as I recall, was a little over two pounds. It's um, a chunk. It came from a very old collection. It's from Dara Ipek in Afghanistan, Kunar Valley. And it's just, uh, like I said, you put it down. When you get the lighting right on it, it just pops and glows. And it's just amazing. If you, if you shine light down at C axis, it just glows solid, solid magenta pink. Let's let's try and do that just a little. Here, hold it up just a little bit for me, and I'm going to try and put my phone light under it to see if we can get it to. You can see that light and that's shine with a very, right very through. Small it. Yeah, it's not a light. it's a phone light, but it's, you can still see the the just flash of color shine through there when you do that. Yeah. One of my favorite things to do with kunzites, actually. So we, we, made a, <laughs> we made a custom base for this because I didn't know what to do with it with Sunnywood, who I think makes the absolute base, best bases. Sure. And uh, Adam and I 
love to see all these different crystals on bases as well. So yeah, I had Sonny one do a few bases for me last year as well. Did they? Yeah, yeah they, they did do. about 20 or 30 for me. So <laughs> I, I, I love them. They're the best. All right. Well, Ed, it was so much. It was great to meet you. It was great Thanks to so see much. the bar and your beautiful crystal. We are in room B13. It is Tuesday morning and we'll be back 1 o'clock p.m. Mountain Time with one more show today. Thanks, everyone. 100% on the rocks. Mm-hmm. <laughs>